12 o'clock noon, an ordinary scene, an ordinary city. To most of them, this hour will be rest, a break in the normal routine, but not to everyone. A dame named Faye Trumbull prepares to take her life into her own hands. Crocodile tears. Where? Where Your time you... has not yet arrived. Let's start with some questions, shall Who we? Who let you into this apartment building? Faye Trumbull. How did you know? Born April 17th, 1882. Are you a census taker? Mother Elizabeth, Father Henry. Now listen here. I don't the know how you... The sketch you were crying over. That was of your dearest friend in all the world, Dorothy Murley. The finest person I was lucky enough to know. I remember escorting her to the other side maybe five years ago. She had red hair, just like Lucy's. How I love Lucille Ball. Well, then you'll be pleased enough to know that she'll live until the 1990s. Well, almost. You, on the other hand, are scheduled to die of heartbreak sometime tonight. So what are you, a quack? Please don't excite yourself. My boss decides when you die. Oh, and you're here to usher me out. Oh, I'm sorry, but I didn't catch your name. That is because I never told you. That's right, you didn't. Well, I'm becoming so forgetful these days. <gasps> I fear I may be becoming sick in my head. Anyhow, my name is Grit. <laughs> I'm here to make this as peaceful as possible. Now, no. these girls are just preparatory. They won't kick in until the top fell upstairs. Besides, it's your time, it's not. Take that! Oh. Mercy! What have you done? You were trying to kill me! I was just defending my right to live! changed my mind about dying today, and such is my right! <laughs> nice try, but I don't run on blood. this in nice and tight. There's a draft in here. We wouldn't want you to catch your death with cold. Stop trying to kill me! Honestly, there are so many better ways to die. I decide when I die. Freedom of free will. <laughs> weapon of some sort in order to protect myself. Ma'am? I'm being pursued by the angel of death. Oh, ma'am, I think you got off on a toot, didn't you? You don't look so good. Look! I, I don't know anything anymore! I think you need to be looked after. My grandfather had arrangements. He used to say that animals mock us when we're not around. And that the forests are filled with creatures large and small laughing at us behind our backs. I'm not filled with derangements. Oh, you're gonna buy something, dear? Because I'm in the middle of something. I need a weapon. Now, do you have one or not? Anything! A letter opener, a diamond cutter, post haste. 
have a box. Ah! Perhaps there's something in it. How, you can how are you? Somebody, help me, please! Let's see what's in here, shall we? Small items. Tooth powder. Some toilet soap. Gold cream. A cake shovel. Perhaps you could stab me with this. What are you doing with my Dorothy's artifacts? That's my box. These were her most valuable belongings. Boots from a man she once helped. that I gave her flowers in. Go ahead, cloak me with it. You're not worth the trouble. These had sentimental value to her. You won't be needing them much longer. You only have a few hours left. The hours of the afternoon passed by as quickly as one would expect. Faye Trumbull found herself in need of a glorious jack. Take me to the nearest saloon. This isn't a cab, madam. I'm just sitting here waiting for my girl to get off of her shift. I need a drink in the worst way. Now, now take me to a saloon. That isn't my concern. Now get out. Step on it, please. This is my sedan. I implore you. If you don't get out immediately, I will be forced to take action. Now, I do not wish to exercise violence upon you, but I will. But, but... Besides, this is Belleville. There's a tavern on every corner. See? Right there. Crazy. Broad's always trying to get in my car. Another pink Sally, please. I think you probably had enough, lady. Listen to me. This is probably the last drink of my life, and I want to make it worth it. Why, why, why the last drink? Leaving this town, leaving this earth, apparently tonight. Yeah, I want to have a little fun before you check out. What are you, a fresh slob? And unsurprisingly youthful, youthful in my agility. You are not my type of, of you know, human. I go to the ladies' room for 45 minutes, and you already have a glorious jag on? I think I have a good reason. Why the gloomy look on your mug? Are you here to kill me? Let's get this done. I have no idea what you're talking about, NTK. Now get yourself together. What did you call me, Grim? Gemma, you know that. You served her one too many. She assisted, see? She's not my responsibility. <sighs> Your brother is my father. He named me after his, after your mother. Here I am, my life ebbing away, and you show up to hold me down and try to poison me to death. I come by every day to make sure that you take your Milltown, your happy pill. They help with the malaise that followed Dorothy's death dealing with the gap between a fulfilling and stifling daily existence. But you attempted yet again to strangle me in the elevator. I mean, my scarf, I cut it. I was attempting to help you remove your scarf in an overheated elevator. I didn't want you to faint that away. But you tried to take my Dorothy's most prized possessions. Your boxes? We took those to the charity shop. You were ready to donate the kitchen items. And those huge size 14 men's galoshes, what were you going to do with those? Do you mean to tell me that I'm only sick in my mind? Up until now, it has only been physical, malaise, Auntie, but I fear it has become mental. Oh my gracious. 
as your niece, as a nursing pupil, and as your caregiver, that is my considered opinion. I'm, I must, I must leave. I must go home and lie down. I will drive you the short distance. No, 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 no. The fresh air will do me good. Yes, the fresh air will do me a world of good after that mixed cocktail. Pardon me, lady. If I was wise, I'd stand back and get out of the way. Now, now, there's no need to look down. And the hair looking like that, I've never seen such a fright. She belongs in a stockyard. Don't you suppose this old gal has been drinking her fair share? She's, She's a grizzled veteran of the town. It's hair level this time is most elderly die of consumption. <gasps> oh, thank you. My pleasure. Are oh, you all right? Have you come out of sorts? You promise you won't put me in a straitjacket? Would you like some help getting to your place? I, I have some time. Uh, no, no thank you. I just need to get settled in and get a bite to eat. I'm hungry as a hunter. I can't help you in any way. No, I, I must have a Are you certain? I really should take care of her. She's my responsibility. I wish you the best of luck. My father suffered from a, a mental breakdown when my mother passed. Just part of the irreversible curse of death. You really do hear everything people say in here, don't you? Gemma decided to follow up that evening to stop by the apartment of her beloved Aunt Vera. He found was a woman, present in body, but departed in soul. She had died of a broken heart, taking all of her pills at once. Andy Bay, wake up! Wake up! No! Faye Trumbull was now in the heavenly clouds, reunited with the best friend she ever knew in this life, Dorothy Murley.